Hey everyone, welcome to the Fargo 3D Printing Show. Uh, Jake Clark and John Schneider today. We got a big announcement this week. We released a Biome 3D uh, material. So it's available in 2.85 and 175 uh, millimeter. Uh, it's a great, great material. So we, we announced it on Tuesday of this week. Yeah. Um, and we've actually been having a couple people test it. We've tested it, as you can see, this is just a fraction of what we what we have uh, in, in the ho in house for what we've tested it with. Um, it's really a, a great material. It's actually got uh, a silky feel to it and a silky look to it as well. It's it's a very shiny. Uh, well, I wouldn't I wouldn't really say I wouldn't really say it's shiny shiny. I mean, it is, but it's not the same as like PLA shiny. No, I mean, it's like a PLA, different kind of shiny. Yeah, PLA is more like if you uh, if you print it, especially at a higher temperature, you get a more glossy look to it. This has more of it's almost a pearl look to it, especially the the, the white. Yeah, so it has it has a very interesting sheen to it. And like Jake mentioned, um, well, what did you just mention? I don't know. Were you not paying attention? No. No, I wasn't. Uh, yeah. But. Maybe that's half your problem. Yeah. But it's a really, it's a really tough material. So there's, there's kind of a difference between tough and strong. So if you think about strong, it's, you know, strength as far as what it can hold. Toughness is how much of a beating it can take before breaking. And Biome 3D is definitely one of those materials that can take a beating. It's much more it's much more malleable than PLA. I think it's even more I think even more than ABS. Or is it or is it it's about the same? It's more more flexible in that regard. Where okay. if you take a part and you squish it and uh, where ABS will probably will, will crack, um, biome doesn't. It actually gives a little bit more before it'll it'll start to crack. Okay. Yeah, and it has really good layer to layer adhesion. So that's one of the one of the big things that we noticed when we first started printing with it is you actually need to um, if you're printing with a raft, you actually need to increase the distance between your raft and your part because otherwise you're going to have a heck of a time getting, getting it off. Yeah, getting your raft off. And if if and, you're using gaffer's tape, <laughs> I probably would just use uh, just the straight acrylic because it, it's that strong well, of adhesion. Actually, no, Zach was doing some testing and found that blue painter's tape, just blue painter's tape, no hairspray coating on it, works really great. Okay. Uh, printing on bare acrylic can work well for PLA. I know uh, one of our friends, Ben Bernard, has worked with PLA on bare acrylic and he has found that worked well. That doesn't work as well with Biome 3D. Now, now something because we did some tests with that on some larger prints and it just didn't stick very well. Now, one thing we haven't haven't tested yet is using a glue stick on bare acrylic. I think that that would work really well for for right. holding biome. Um, so one of the other good things about biome, it, it is a bio based plastic, so it you're not going to have the type of odor that you have when you print with ABS. And this actually has uh, less of an odor than PLA does. When PLA is printing, it has kind of that sweet waffles, Waffly. syrupy taste. Or taste. taste. Why are so, you licking the prints, John? It's just so good. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, this is but yeah, the, the so the biome has even less of an odor. It has a really good melt flow characteristic. So you actually need to bump your temperatures down about 10 degrees from where you normally print PLA at. So what we do when we're testing this is we bump it down 10 degrees from PLA and then we experiment kind of five degrees in each direction from there to see what works best. Um, I mean, just this material looks so cool. I mean, this so this is our rabbit um, who I don't think we've officially named yet, uh, but it just, it looks like an, it looks like an orange, orange cream sickle, cream sickle. Yeah, I think that's the word. Sure. I don't know. Wow. Looking at this, you get, you get you know what it looks like. Well, I mean, if you look at so if we like look at the spool, um, it has a very like if you if you look at the photos on our Three M USA website, um, it has that shine to it that you're like, oh, that's that's an interesting shine. But it really actually has that shine. It's not you know it's not edited or nothing. That's actually what it looks like. So it's a very um, has a very interesting sheen to it, like you said before. Yeah. Um, and and it just. Uh, the feeling to it is very, very silky and smooth. Yeah. So it, it's a it's a great plastic to work with, and like John said, it has a little bit more uh, toughness strength to it over your PLA and ABS. So um, so there is some mechanical properties right. to it. Right. And we're we have uh, we do have a technical data sheet on this. Um, if you go to 3 dmusacom slash biome3d, uh, partway down the page there is a link to download the technical data sheet that does have some of the uh, the mechanical properties in there. We're we're actually working on creating a comparison sheet that will compare 
ABS to PLA to biome. It is to, compared to ABS in there, I believe. Yeah, but it's not compared to PLA. No. And like we want to have full. I mean, we have the stats. We just don't have it in a published form yet. Um, and in, then, a, in a digestible form. And when right. I say that, because then because there's certain things where um, when you look at the technical data sheet, it looks different than what it actually acts like. So there's we're gonna we're working on all the the descriptions of what we do for our testing, so that when when you look at it, you can say, okay, why is the number the way it is compared to PLA or compared to ABS? And then going into more of a uh, descriptive, um, more of a layman's term, more than instead of engineering terms right so, so like you understand if, it better if you're a mechanical engineer you take a look at the the mechanical properties you'll understand what it means but to someone that doesn't understand what flexural modulus is or flexural modulus that, i mean i don't really know well it's probably an engineer yeah exactly <laughs> I'm, the, I'm the marketing guy so we're going to put that into a digestible form so that it makes sense and as we come out with new materials even beyond biome 3d so that you can have a good comparison and one of the things that we're doing when we're doing these mechanical tests is we're not just taking someone else's tests from abs or we're not taking an injection molded abs part but we're doing a 3d printed part doing a one to one to one to one so our 3d printed parts are all printed on the same machine i believe they're printed on a lulzbot mini yes so so they're all having a Approximately the same print settings. I mean, to be able to make the print. Yeah, to, to the, make the, the only, material the only, actually print. Only, I mean, I mean the the temperatures infill, are going to be temperatures are going to be different. Infill, I think, is hundred percent. Yeah, no, the, the the temperature is the only thing that's different because the different materials require different temperatures. So that's the only thing that's really different. Right. Um, and then we're actually what we're going to be doing is comparing that to injection molded. Um, right. samples. So what that does and what that allows for is if you're an engineer you can say alright I'm building a product out of biome you know I in the end it's gonna be injection molded so I wanna know is it going to increase in strength is it gonna decrease in strength when I go from 3d printed to um, to injection molding because there is gonna be a little bit of difference because there is that extra process in there it's a different process than, than injection molding so um, we'll actually have that data side by side um, soon so that um, you guys can see what the actual differences is differences are um, so you can compare and uh, uh, adjust accordingly in the models yeah so we're hoping to have that up in the next probably one to two weeks probably closer to two weeks um, we have another well we have a few more materials in our in our product pipeline that we just can't talk about yet um, but keep an eye open for about two to three weeks from now. We should have something that's really, really special. Um, that's really all I can say about it. Um, How does that? To, yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I think for biome, we've kind of hit the kind of hit the high points. It's a more flexible material. It has increased toughness relative to PLA. Slightly lower melting point. Very low warping. Um, I think even less warping than PLA. And we've had it working on Lulzbot, MakerBots, um, Flash Forge. Um, I think. We're testing the CME CNC as well as I think Airwolf has 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 tested. Uh, yep, yeah. So Airwolf has tested the the material on their machine. Type A's we haven't seen it. We haven't tested it in house. Later this week, yeah, we're gonna have a Type A Series One mm -hmm. that will be. I think they've done some in house testing, um, and we're gonna be doing Cubes. we're gonna be doing some testing here pretty soon. Well, <laughs> the three D systems Cube, the Cube Pro is a whole different story. We're working on doing on testing different materials in there. It's just right now we need we're waiting on some replacement parts from an extruder that went down. So once it's we have those longer than expected. Yeah, once we have those replacement parts, we'll be able to do some testing. Um, we've actually found a filament workaround for the for the Cube Pro. We we're pretty sure it works, but until we have the the good parts back in so that we can test and verify and do a, a decent write up on how to do that. I'm reluctant to say yes it will work but I can say that there are other people out there that have used non 3d systems materials with their cube pros so there is hope out there and biome I believe will be able to work and biome works really well on the fifth gen printers I mean it works I mean you have to do some settings you have to create a custom profile to change the temperature mainly that's the big thing just change advanced. the temperature yeah not really a custom profile you just have to go in advance and change a few things right yeah well i mean make about desktop their new version makes it super easy to adjust that yeah. stuff so you don't need to go in and edit lines of code you just go in and change a few values and we've used it on uh we've used simplify 3d with the makerbot z18 printing biome and it works i mean it works really well we've even tweaked the speed on the z18 to increase the print speed decrease the print time so, I mean, that's been working really well. It really only works well on larger parts, 
So this is kind of a side note, but with the Z18, we found that even if you crank up your printing speed because of the acceleration settings in the firmware, you need to have you need to give the the extruder enough time to run up to the main speed. Otherwise, it's never going to get up to that speed. Yeah, because it's, it's, it's like tricky. it's like taking off from a light. You don't when you hit the gas pedal at a, at a red light when it turns green, you don't instantly go 60 miles an hour. There's a right. there's a there's a spot where you get up to 60, and then once you get to 60, there's another red light. Let's say then you got to brake. Right. So maybe you're only at 60 miles an hour for a couple of seconds in if, our case. If even that. Yeah, and, so, I mean, and it's very different than the Lulzbot Mini because the Lulzbot Mini, it's able to accelerate so much more quickly than the uh, than the Z18 is. And that's not to say that it can't. It's physically not able to do it, but based on the, the current firmware, I mean, it, it has limitations to acceleration, at least for getting you know for getting good quality prints yeah so the the point there is you can print faster with this material um but just with larger prints yeah. because it has to you have to allow proper uh, cooling time for it right. to uh to, to solidify so that's the only thing is so um if you are doing larger parts play with that and see see what you find out um, post some pictures of the stuff you guys print with it because it's because uh, we've printed with quite a bit of stuff here right. and it's always interesting to see what other people are using the material for yep and like pla make sure that if if you're printing in biome 3d that you have an active cooling fan blowing yes blowing uh air on the print itself because similar to pla it needs to it, it does have a well-defined glass transition temperature so you need to make sure that it's cooled before you lay down another layer on top of it otherwise it starts to get a little bit mushy yeah and I know with the Z18, um, if you're having issues with that, just take the lid off and see if that helps because we've actually taken the top off of our machine and uh, it, it kind of improves the uh, airflow across there because now you're getting uh, cooler air in there where before the vents well, kind, of, that's, kind of obstructed it, but it's, de uh, it's debatable on that. There, I well, the, debate the, a lot of things. There's, there's, there's more issues with that lid on the Z18 than cooling. It's more the filament guide tube gets well gets I'm just talking about cooling I'm not talking about the other issues in regards to it so right. but so that's another thing that you can look at doing um, to increase some of the flow because the fan actually pulls the air inside that top down into the part so that's where you could increase a little bit more of, a, of an airflow yeah but so yeah we've been we've been cranking out some really good parts I think we'll have at some point we'll have some pictures of some really really big parts um, with a couple of our materials, so um, stay on the lookout for that. Yeah. Um, oh, another thing with uh, with the biome material, we've uh, uh, Zach, um, our engineering guy, has designed a spool holder for the Replicator fifth gen that works works beautifully. So a lot of the current spool holders that were out there for the fifth gen, they either hung off the back or they hung really awkwardly off the side of the of the fifth gen, which it increased the footprint quite a bit. It wasn't. It just wasn't. They weren't great. So he designed one that swings the filament right down, almost inside the uh, not the enclosure, but inside the frame. It's kind of half in the frame, half outside the frame. Um, and you use the existing filament guide tube with the fifth gen. It does a really great job. So it lets you use non MakerBot spools very easily with the uh, with the fifth gen. I know he's working on a better version for the uh, for the Z18 as well, and for the for the Replicator Mini. Yeah. So. That's on Thingiverse, um, so it's on our Thingiverse page. Uh, is it on our page or is it? Anyways, it's on Thingiverse. Yeah, it's on the. If you go to the Fargo 3D Printing Thingiverse account, it'll be uh, it'll be there. Okay. Yeah. So it's there, and then I think we if uh, if you guys can't print it for whatever reason, I think we might be putting it up for like a buck or something, and for shipping on our website. I know yeah. we're doing that with the shipping stuff, where the parts are free, you just gotta pay for shipping, and you can download those shipping parts as well on on uh, online, but. Um, with the filament holder, we'll be doing both options. So in case you you can't print it or whatever, you can get it um, a little bit easier. We'll print it and send it out. So um, look for that on our website. It should be in our shop at some point. So one more thing, one the very last thing with Biome 3D. Sorry. One more. One more. The very yeah. One I know, more. I know, I know. I know. The very last thing with Biome 3D. Um, if you're if you don't want to be buying a spool right off the bat. Philobits.com is offering uh, Biome 3D filament samples through I'm, Monday. Yeah, well, for free through Monday, and then free they're through Monday. and then they're going to be offering Biome filament samples in the future as well. But right now, it's free through this Monday, July. What's that going to be? Uh, hold on, let me that, check. Let me be check what? my technology. The twelfth. The thirteenth. Thirteenth. Yeah. 13th. So through the thirteenth. <laughs> Or until they run out of filament samples, and from the sounds of it, they might run out of filament samples. Yeah, so I, I hope when this goes up that you still have an opportunity to get it. If not, 
check Philibits out, they'll be then yeah, they'll be, they'll be in, selling send samples. Send him an, uh, an email saying, "Hey, I want to get some," and then uh, he'll get some more in for you. We also have uh, our our PLA there as well, so check that out. He also has a lot of other cool filaments, but uh, the the coolest is obviously biome. Yeah, um, clearly. So, so check that out. Um, and then uh, there's a I think Monarch 3D is accepting pre-orders um, as well, and I think. A couple other resellers will come online here very soon, yeah. and they'll be accepting um, orders as well. So stay on the lookout for those as well. Yeah. So um, if you want to learn more about Biome 3D, go to 3dmusa.com slash biome3d. So 3domusa.com. Yeah. So on behalf of Jay Clark, myself, John Schneider, we want to thank you for watching and listening this week. If you haven't already, please subscribe to this, uh, whether it's on YouTube or iTunes. Uh, follow us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Google+, you name it, we're there. Uh, definitely go over, check out the 3DM USA Facebook page, um, and uh, like that. I'll, like you said, subscribe here. We got some very cool stuff coming up. We got um, a new segment coming up in the next couple weeks yeah. um, that will be on more of the engineering side. And uh, So yeah, stay tuned for that. And next week, you're probably going to see a different backdrop to this. We do have a different set. If you can call this a set, I don't really think you can call this a set, but we're going to have a, we're going to be filming this in a different environment. So next week's podcast will probably look very different. So yes. also look forward to that. Uh, again, on behalf of both of us, thanks for watching. See you later. It's like, let's put big words in spots where there's little words so we can look like we know what we're doing.